Hello mate, you alright? Well, back to football therapy. Uh, I hope you're all doing well <laughs> with me, your host Jan. Well, what a malfunctioning intro. Hello, welcome back to football therapy. With me, your host Jan. I hope you are all doing well. Welcome back to the channel and to your latest lockdown Chelsea news. Few things to discuss today. New contracts being given to players. Both kind of surprising in many ways. Well, maybe not. Well, we're going to get into that. An update on the Philippe Coutinho negotiations. Reportedly, so say if certain news media outlets. And I want to talk about Erling Haaland. What? Why, Jan? We're not been linked to him. Now, that's true. Well, not properly. Certainly not for a while. But I don't think he would go to Manchester United, Hurling. And I think there's a reason for that. And here's a release clause and it's really cheap and obviously he's amazing and he's young Frank Lampard likes young players I'm just gonna speculate and ask you the question should Chelsea be looking at Holland? hmm so yes lots to get through lots to discuss uh, also I want to take a second to remind you lot that the majority of you who watch this video are not subscribed so please do subscribe if you watch my videos why not like the video if you want to help me out doing this daily grind bringing you guys the news and updates every single day and while we're on the plug train let me tell you about my nhs fundraiser where i'm trying to help out warriors on the front line helping everyone get through this pandemic i've set up a fundraiser and if you donate by clicking the link in the top of the description you have the opportunity to win a chelsea shirt that i will send to you if you leave your twitter handle and your donation mes message message again words seem to evade me only a couple of days left on the campaign make sure you do donate all right let's get into it right a quick update on philippe coutinho to chelsea on a loan deal apparently which is the story circulating around certain corners of the football media well apparently chelsea have opened negotiations with barcelona so say of sport and they've proposed a loan deal which Barcelona are not opposed to doing obviously they just loaned the player to uh, Bayern Munich and doesn't he doesn't seem to really have a future at Barcelona at the moment you know my opinion on Philippe Coutinho if you don't yet go back and watch some videos where I've talked about him fairly recently I talk about his stats and how he could help Chelsea out for a multitude of reasons now apparently a deal can be struck where Chelsea pay the wages of the player plus a loan fee that apparently Barcelona would be happy with the stumbling block they've reached at the moment is Barcelona want Chelsea to have an obligation to buy after the said proposed loan deal where Chelsea do not want an obligation, they want an option. Um, I guess maybe kind of like the Kovacic deal with Real Madrid. So yeah, I mean if Chelsea can pull off that deal alone with an option to buy and no obligation, that could suit them perfectly. Off of that quality in the final third midfield of the pitch playing between the lines and scoring 30 yard bangers, why not? I'll keep you guys posted on the Philippe Coutinho story. Make sure you stop by Football Therapy every single day and I'll keep you updated. Contract extensions. A couple of players to talk about in this instance. One being Olivier Giroud. You don't actually say the D, it's just Giroud. Anyway, Giroud has admitted in a couple of interviews that he was trying so desperately to escape Chelsea in January. Not because he has any like animosity with the club, he just wanted to play. I think he respected Lampard's decision. Lampard respected his professionalism. We all know the story. He had a couple of agreed contracts with other clubs and he has since come out and admitted, yes, I tried to get away, I couldn't get away, I was really annoyed, but then he goes on to explain how he's happy at Chelsea again, because he got onto the team and he played well. You know, he was a catalyst to success in Chelsea's recent positive form. He accepts that and he's like, oh, you know, I'm happy again. And to be honest, now the Euros has been pushed back another year, he probably thinks, that was my chance, dude. That was my chance. I needed to play regular football to play that. I'm, the ship's probably sailed now. So now I should just try and stay in London with my family. You know, play a bit of football here and there where I can. And the Chelsea contract extension could offer that. So since admitting he was happy again, maybe he would be willing to take as little as a 12 month contract extension, hang out in London one more year with Chelsea, and then maybe go to MLS, which he's talked about before. Afterwards, that could suit him nicely. So we'll have to see what happens. If he's willing to accept 12 months, I think he'll probably stay at Chelsea for another season. The next story regarding a contract extension is a big Germanic Italian speaking center half, Tony Rudiger. 
Apparently Chelsea are really interested in tying him down to a new deal that only lasts for three years though, so it'll be 20 to 2023, probably an improved wage, I guess, maybe, but they want to secure his future for a bit more long term. They've opened up talks with the player, I guess the player would hopefully agree. Maybe he'd want more, because he's still a relatively young player. Maybe it's the kind of guy that would want five years instead of three. We'll have to see. Rudy got splits opinion with the Chelsea fans. If you're not a Chelsea fan, you think he's this like amazing centre-back, or certainly you think he's by far Chelsea's best centre-half. Chelsea fans are splitting him. He was supposed to be the one that comes in and settles the defence, the most experienced of the back line. I'm not in the business of slating him, I don't think he's particularly bad, but I think he's had bad games. But then again, I think everyone in defence at Chelsea has had a bad game this season. So it's really interesting to see. I guess he's a valuable asset. Um, obviously won the Europa League with Chelsea. Generally a good player, right? So maybe it's just a good business move to get him on an extension. Apparently Frank Lampard is very happy with Antonio Rudiger generally, so maybe it's under Lampard's instruction, who by the way, we now know, does have a lot of power behind the scenes at Chelsea, much more than a lot of people would have assumed. So, Tony Rudiger for a contract extension, I guess. Watch this space. Erling Bra Haaland, or Haaland as you're supposed to say it. Teenage superstar, goal machine, absolutely tore it up in Salzburg. Everyone's like, oh, but can he do it in a better league? smashed up the Champions League for Salzburg, went to Dortmund and just blew minds. He's very good. I'm gonna pop up a graphic next to me of who scored stats, displaying his metrics for this season. Oh my giddy aunt, mate. 53 goals for club and country in just 39 appearances. Ridiculous. <laughs> Bearing in mind like, probably like 87 hat tricks. He scored so many hat tricks. Loads of his goals are off the bench as well. I haven't worked it out, but those goals to minutes ratio are probably still, frankly, insane as well. It might be like 39 apps, but I reckon that's loads of sub appearances as well. He was doing loads for Dortmund. He would have been subbed off in certain games. I reckon his goal per 90, or like how many goals per 90? He's probably like 2.5 goals per 90 or something ridiculous. I don't know, point being, he's a goal machine. He's proven that he could do it in the Austrian League. He's proven he could do it in the Bundesliga and the Champions League. And he's still a teenager. Now the interesting thing with Holland is Chelsea never really were linked to him. Obviously Man United, uh, wanted to go in hard. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer being his countryman from Norway, he probably really wanted to bring him in and fancy did have some sort of allure, but due to some, you know, historic confrontations with Manchester United related things and Holland's father, is that enough for him to not want to go to the club? Maybe. On the face of it, Dortmund is a really, really good move. It's a perfect stepping stone regardless from Salzburg, um, you know, Germans, the Austrian Bundesliga to this Bundesliga. Kind of makes sense. I, I personally think he probably should stay there for another season or two, but there's a very, very good chance he could go again. And he's, I think he's talked about being open to it, which is worrying. If you buy a player that's just constantly open to jumping about to another club, before you know it, he's just at Real Madrid by the time he's 21. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But here's why I want to talk about it. So, Say Real Madrid aren't gonna buy Holland or whatever, yeah. Let's just say they're not gonna do it. He has a release clause of 63 million pounds. Now, even after a potential financial crisis due to a pandemic in the transfer window, 63 million pounds is still a very, very achievable and affordable transfer figure for a Premier League club, especially a Premier League club that was comfortable or in a comfortable space enough to do some recent transfer business like Chelsea. Holland speaks English as well by all accounts. Uh, I've seen him speak English and maybe he might fancy the Premier League and maybe he might fancy a team similar to Dortmund that like playing youngsters and playing attacking football. Oh my word, yes that sounds a lot like Chelsea Football Club. Now it's really really important to know that I'm not saying Chelsea are going to buy Erling Haaland. You watch my channel and I tell you, I'll give you the headlines, I'll put them up on the screen about what's going on and I'll tell you my opinion. There is no headline linking Chelsea to Erling Haaland for this topic. I just wanted to bring it up because I know he's got a really low release clause and astronomical numbers. I think, is this something that Chelsea should consider? Apparently he insisted to Dortmund that this uh, release clause was put in so he could basically have an out if a club come up to him that he really likes if Chelsea can get in his ear and whisper a good story 
then he'd be like, okay, I'll go. Just go and buy me. 63 million pounds. Manchester United might still be interested, but maybe not. And then who else, you know? Is it gonna be someone like Manchester City to replace Aguero? Could be. But still, I think Chelsea should be in that conversation. And if they really are looking for young quality to be a centre forward and to gobble up chances, let's be real, man, this guy gobbles up chances. I personally think this is something that Chelsea Football Club should consider. What do you guys think? I want to get your thoughts and opinions on this in the comment section below. Is this something you'd like to see Chelsea investigate or do you think he doesn't suit the style of Chelsea or something like that? Express yourself in the comment section below and also I want to hear your comments on Rudiger and Olivier Giroud and why not Philippe Coutinho as well. If you have enjoyed the content I've provided for you guys today, please do like the video, that helps me out a lot. Feel free to follow me on Instagram at Football Yannick. I'm doing live streams on that every single day. Uh, what else? That's pretty much it. So enjoy the football that's not happening and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.